Okay, it's three o'clock. We're going to go ahead and roll into the next presentation, which is to work between VSP, CAD, and CFD interaction and uh, some advanced modeling techniques. So uh, this presentation can be a little bit of a hodgepodge depending on how you look at it, but it's going to show some of the techniques that work between going in between VSP and CAD systems and CFD tools and how some of that workflow can go. And if you don't happen to have access to one of these tools, say a nice CAD package, there are things that you can do in VSP to approximate some of the features that you can get out of a CAD system. So we're gonna work with uh, some introduction, move into tool interaction and VSP model setup and techniques, and then how to get into some CAD model detailing and adjustment, and then grid generation and refinement. So basically we're going from an open VSP model into a high fidelity CFD solution. And we're starting off with the VSP geometry as the source so that everything that we do lines up and works well. So the main reason for this is that the boundaries between parametric modeling, CAD and CFD are blurring and they have been for years as computer power increases and we get some more information ahead of time. So advanced knowledge of the aerodynamic or structural or manufacturing issues early in the process saves you time and money later. And streamlining this process between your various tools saves even more time and effort. And it also helps avoid miscommunication between your various teams. So this presentation is intended to just convey techniques and some lessons learned. Uh, and in, it's just from using a variety of design and analysis tools. It's not a comprehensive list. If you have something that works well for you, by all means do that. This is just to put it out there so that if you need it for a reference, you can have it. So the idea here is that we're starting from a parametric model. We add some details in CAD, and then we get things out and we generate grids for things like CFD solvers. So the idea here is that there's this iterative design change among all these different tools to where one is good for one thing and another performs another task very well. So each of these processes is integrated and each tool is used to their individual strengths. So if something is really good at adding detailed features, do it in that tool and then hand it off to the other ones and vice versa. You don't want to try and necessarily brute force things in VSP if you don't have to. Trust me, it's, it's a big headache. Um, so let's start off with some stuff in OpenVSP, namely your surface resolution. So if you're using a grid as a reference surface for things like, say, a solver setup, you want the grids that you build in your grid system to be able to project and grow onto this reference surface. So you want it to be as close to a true representation as you can. So give it a very high tessellation value and you'll get a good grid onto a good surface instead of trying to map, say, a really great, well-spaced uh, grid onto a surface that has a bunch of sharp corners to it. Because the, grids, the grid system will do that and it's going to give you crap information out. So if you're using the VSP surface itself as the solver model, just make sure and set your tessellation and grouping according to your needs. So increase tessellation and group points where you expect large gradients. So for example, if you're running a wing in isolation and you want to get a better capture of the downwash out at the wing tip, just make your tip grouping a little bit better so that you get more points and uh, you, can, you can get that to capture some more of the behaviors. When you're exporting for things like 3D printing, use really, really high tessellation and you're going to get a much better surface for your source and then your slicer can do whatever it wants to with that. Um, so sometimes you need to beware using airfoil files with excessively clustered points and this uh, can tend to happen for things like the leading edge. If you have more than about one to 200 airfoil points and they are highly, highly clustered down at the uh, leading edge, for example, it can cause a little bit of surface ringing where all those points are smashed together and it can either make it wiggle when you go out to something like CAD or if you try and use that as a reference surface, it can, it can do some interpolation that can cause problems. So your best bet is to use between about 100 and 200 foil points and that's usually good enough. So uh, in my experience, when you try and set things up for gridding, you can go ahead and do some of the work ahead of time in OpenVSP so that you don't have to go back and do as much interpretation in your grid system.
or your grid tools. So you try and have a maximum growth ratio of about 1.1, maybe 1.2, depending on the fidelity. And for your wing settings, you know, 201 points all the way around in the cordwise direction, and maybe 80 or 100 in the spanwise, depending on the wing. And your leading edge, trailing edge clustering for high fidelity methods, set them to about 0.1, and uh, you'll have a nice surface to where you can start growing your grids. If you're doing a body type, uh, set the number W to 361, so you get about one degree per section. That's going to give you a really nice surface for your grids. And the thing is that VSP has come a long way, and when you're exporting to grids, you want to make sure that the model is in the solver units. So if your VSP model is in meters or in feet or in inches, Make sure that when you dump everything out, go ahead and just save yourself the trouble and scale it to whatever the solver wants. So you don't want to give your grid setup uh, model in inches and then have to go into each individual one of those and scale them down when you can just as easily do it in, uh, in VSP. So uh, if you're going out to a CAD file via IGIS or STEP, uh, these processes have improved a great deal, particularly over the last year, so they're basically unit agnostic. Whatever you tell it it is when you export, be it feet or inches, it will set that and then it's going to come into your CAD system. Uh, but make sure that your tolerance are set up, your tolerances are set up so that you can do a good surface import. So this is just a layout of some of the file formats that you can use among the various tools. And uh, so now we're going to try and cover a few advanced VSP techniques. So say, for example, you don't have access to uh, a really nice CAD package, and you, but you still want to model some of these features to do some basic either panel method or uh, a free CFD tool like you can get from NASA or elsewhere. So we're going to cover some of these. And... Uh, I do uh, kind of go quickly through some of these examples, and I apologize if we kind of breeze by something. There's a lot to cover in this, and it's mostly just to give you an example of what you can do. So in this case, we had a uh, wingtip nacelle that we wanted to put a fillet and fill this area in. And I'll try and highlight that here with this laser pointer. That originally we started with just a two cross-section piece that we tried to blend in and achieve the desired shape. And as a first approximation, it may be okay, but it's not quite there because it's really difficult to match a 2D section to a 3D surface, and you're not quite getting things the way that you want them. So you can see here that there is a little bit of a fillet built in here, but it's not quite right. But if we do the same thing to something that's essentially symmetric along a plane, you can get some pretty good behavior. So in this case, we did basically the same thing and used some cross sections that were aligned with the wing leading edge and then this pylon and the nacelle. And you can get a pretty darn good strike just from doing this with a few cross sections. This was really easy to do. And if we click, we can see that these surfaces trim themselves nicely. They'd have nice intersection points where you can either intersect with VSP or you can intersect in your gridding tool and get these out mesh them in, and you're good to go. So we're almost there for something like this, and it's pretty useful. But what we realized was that gridding in CAD software doesn't care whatsoever about what surface is really normal in OpenVSP. So you can use the inside of a component as the blending surface. So as this video kind of rotates around, and hopefully it's coming through nicely to the viewers here online, you can see this region is the surface that's coming out as the fillet between the wing and this tip nacelle. And by using a fuselage part, it allows us to have lots of fine control of the cross-section sh uh, shape and size and placement and orientation. And we can take it even a step further by using the skinning parameters to try and make that intersection between the wing and the tip nacelle be as smooth as we can so that we can try and control where this actually hits. This is very, very, very tedious. So you have to manually place all of these. Uh, if you wanted to, technically you could go through and script it by using a surface intersection and calculating where everything needed to be. I certainly haven't done that yet. And uh, if that's something that you want to do, you are more than welcome. But we did the same thing for that uh, pylon nacelle junction. 
And by making them symmetric about either side and controlling some of the cross-section placement and skinning, we could very finely create uh, some strakes that fit this kind of three to one ratio where you wanted them to be nice and deep. They have a nice growth. This is all based on, uh, you know, NACA wind tunnel studies back in the day. But we're again using the inside of this surface as our reference that we grow onto when we have our grids and we just build those up in our gridding tools. So this all ended up working really, really well. But the point here is that if you're going to do this, make sure that there are well-defined intersection curves in between either component. And that's gonna make things much easier for either your CAD or your gridding tools to pull out those intersection curves that you can use for reference. So in this case, you can dump these things out and use them as step or IGES files, and then you can build them up from the CAD. So the actual physical part that's built for manufacturing is based on the stuff that came out of VSP. You use those intersection lines as a guide and then build things up in a way that makes sense for the manufacturer. So in this case, here is this wingtip nacelle and wing with that fillet that we built up. This is the overlay of the various grids that we were able to build and grow onto this surface. And when we do that, you can see that rather than have this weird uh, discontinuous jump in the boundary layer between the gradient as it's coming back along the nacelle and the gradient as it's coming back along the wing, the fillet does exactly what it's supposed to do and it allows those two to talk to each other and to smooth along. So we actually got much better behavior as we were coming back this direction by putting this arbitrary VSP generated fillet in here. Now for higher fidelity, if we really want to know what you know the best answer is going to come out of CFD is going to be, of course we can slice up the CAD file and get what it actually is. But for a first approximation, this worked really, really well. So a bit of a summary on this is that they, the VSP components can absolutely be used to blend between parts in a model. But just use them intelligently and understand that there are going to be some inherent limitations to what you're trying to do. So it's not going to necessarily do a full curve-to-curve -curve mapped constant radius transition between two bodies unless you put in a lot of work. But if you're doing things like blending between parallel slices or a wing-to-wing -wing or a wing-to-a-body, you can get something like, say, a glove and bat blend between a wing and a transport fuselage pretty darn easily. And, uh, you know, blending these components can be directly imported to either your CAD or your grid software. So another neat thing is that existing designs from CAD can be approximated in VSP by importing the STL and using either a by hand or fit model. So Rob demonstrated that you can use fit model to make some really complex, interesting shapes just by taking some time and getting it to fit. So uh, what we'll talk about now is using open VSP components to remove material from CAD parts. And a lot of these you'll notice I'm using these high lift propeller blades from X57 because that's what I'm most familiar with. That's what I was doing at the time. Uh, so the demonstrations that you're going to see are part of the design process and go into how I kind of created these things. So in this case, the cutter parts are these in gold and the actual physical blades are in red. And the gold part is used to clear material away from the nacelle to make sure that the red propeller, propeller blades aren't going to strike the nacelle when they fold back. So using a transparent view, you can see these parts of the nacelle back here that are going to get trimmed out. And these are the solid cutter blades. And the nice thing is you can export these parts separately, and then you only use a single cutter to save yourself some time. So you cut it once and then make an axial pattern in CAD, and it gives you exactly what would happen if you tried to dump out all five of these. So here is the CAD part after I cut those pieces away. And the things that you need to watch out for are to avoid sharp corners and multi-directional bends because that's going to make things really tricky for your grid tools. So if you can go in and manipulate things and maybe fix them a little bit in CAD to avoid those sharp corners, your grid tools are going to be much, much happier and can build volume grids much easier than if you leave these high curvature regions, which we'll show later. But in this case, all of those blades that came straight from VSP nestled perfectly in these little cutout regions because that's what they were designed to do. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that those cutter parts left a ten thousandths of an inch constant distance from the lower surface of this blade here where they touch, 
and back here it maintained a 30 thou clearance. So not only are these things able to clear material away, but they're able to do so very, very accurately. So moving off of that and to talk a little bit about hinges, if you know that you're going from OpenVSP and you're going to need a physical hinge later in your uh, CAD model, it's really easy to dump out a small pin cylinder to use as a reference in CAD. So all you have to do is attach a VSP cylinder to the rotation center and extend it along that axis. And when you write out the step file, you've got a little cylindrical reference that you can say, hey, here's my pin. This is where your mechanism connection goes. And it makes it so much faster than having to do the math and do the math and align everything. And the neat thing is that hinges or even a combination of hinges can provide a more realistic control of your component kinematics than simply mixing a bunch of blanks together. So hinge parameters like rotate and translate can all be linked together to define something like a pin or a cylinder or a slide and various types of joints. So in this case, this is an example of a six level jointed hinge all driven by a single fraction. So you can see here in the top right that I'm moving a user parameter that I created. And what that does is it commands each of these hinges to deploy by either a percentage of its zero or 100% deployment angle. So I can make this thing wrap up on itself or fully deploy, kind of like maybe a soft robotic arm. So it can wrap up on itself, it can extend, and you can set these to be whatever joint angle you want it to be. And you can set this up using user parameters and links to be, say, stowed or deployed. So you can imagine something like this being exceptionally useful for putting together, say, a complex landing gear mechanism. So we're about halfway through uh, this particular talk and we're doing okay on the number of slides. So with this, I'm gonna give a bit of a word on scripting. And the reason that scripting is so powerful, particularly with something like a propeller blade, is that you can rapidly alter configurations by changing a few parameters and inputs and it drastically reduces the time involved by, compared to modifying things by hand. And it's really important if you need repeatable and accurate models to be created. So rather than going through and trusting that you got everything right and didn't fudge the numbers when you were typing it in, it does it for you. So an example case here is again the conformal blades and cutters. Each of these propeller blades were defined by between 40 and 80 radial cross sections. That's all of those blade curves. And that depended on how many inputs came out from the X rotor model. And what you'll see is that trying to manually change these, VSP has a lot to update. It's got a lot of work to do and it takes some time. But by scripting it, it's orders of magnitude faster. So in this case, we've got a single section modify example where what I'm trying to do here is thicken the trailing edge and the leading edge to make this cutter component. So it's already set my offsets to make it a cutter. What I need to do is thicken it so it's going to clear the material away. And as I'm doing this, you can see how long it takes to only change a single parameter here. And there's one. So it's going to go through the same process for the leading edge. We have to go and tell it that I want to turn something on. And then it's going to allow me and then I have to set the value and it's got to update. So you have to do this for each individual cross section along the blade. And it takes a lot of time. But instead of that, this is what happens when it's scripted. So I run a script that does all of these modifications for me automatically. And what you're going to see here is that I run the script, it's going to think about it, and it does take a little while to run because it's still a complex part. It has to update everything and it does have to build it. But not only does it run the entire blade in about half the time it took to do one cross section, it does, it, it pieces them up and it's good to go and it's all accurate. So that saved me tons and tons and tons of time. So that's just a brief demonstration on how useful and powerful scripting can be. Another really useful feature that we have are VSP trimmed surfaces. So this is basically like a trimmed CAD export and piecing everything together. What it's going to do is it's going to calculate the intersection curves and the intersection surfaces for you. And they can come out as plot 3D. You can dump everything out in IGES or STEP. And it's kind of similar to a tool called EGADS to Surf that I used with Chimera Grid Tools that we'll talk about later. But don't neglect that this feature is here 
because some of the intersections and things that you would tend to rely on either CAD or your grid tools to accomplish can actually be done in VSP ahead of time and they're ready to go so you can start off with that work already done. So a brief word on how to fix things in CAD while we're talking about it. An IGES file or a step file might not come into your CAD program as a solid because maybe there's some misaligned edges, maybe there was a tolerance issue, but it might come in as a surface. And the easiest way to come in and fix this stuff is to look at your wireframe view and typically a CAD system is going to identify any gaps or misaligned edges by highlighting them. Now, most of these CAD tools have a way to go in and heal these back up and once that's done, you can solidify. And the reason that we tend to work in solid components is because you can use those to either merge or cut, you can use them to build in rounds, you can use them as a basis for another piece of geometry. So in this case, if we start off with, say, a parameterized and simple VSP geometry like we have here with one of the X57 nacelles, we bring that in as surfaces to CAD, and then we thicken it up, and we add some features, and we end up with the final manufactured part. But the important thing here is that we started with a VSP geometry. And once we got to the part where we had our detailed design, once you're past the parametric side of the design stage, you can take whatever changes you make in CAD and feed them back into VSP. So it's not just one direction. You can sync them back and forth so that your VSP model starts following your CAD instead of the other direction. So things that you should watch out for if you're coming out of CAD into your grid tools are pinched regions and high curvature areas. And you can do that by doing a surface analysis just to see where they are. And this is gonna help with your exports. So to kind of get towards the close of this talk, for the grid system that I did for these high lift propeller blades and the nacelles, I used a feature of Chimera grid tools uh, called EGADS to Surf. And it's part of the open source MIT EGADS library and it's part of this uh, design system with engineering sketchpad. So I was able to import CAD and then add that to things that I already had in place from OpenVSP. And the nice thing is, is it gives you all of the edges that it calculates, it gives you the surfaces as rectilinear glid grids, and then from there you can start to build things up and grow. And the final result is a combination of all these various sources. So. We've got a nacelle and a spinner and a nose cap and all these nacelle grids come straight from VSP. The blades, because they didn't need to be modified at all, also came straight from VSP and the source was the source. But all these little pockets where I had to do this detailed work came from CAD. And because I used the same source, all of these lined up, all of them meshed perfectly in my grid system. I didn't have to go back and do any taping. They just worked. And they integrate seamlessly. And that's the point. It saves you so much time and headache by going in and making this work off the bat. So thank you all very much. I understand that that was quite a lot of information. Uh, we've got a few minutes to spare before the next talk, so I'm more than happy to try and answer any questions about that. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the presentation, and we'll get ready for our next presenter. Hey, hey Brandon. Yes, sir. there's if no questions come up, there's some questions that have come up online that I could do some demo. So let's give people just a moment to ask it, ask any questions to Brandon, and then I'll try and address some of the other questions that have been coming up. 